Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm late on this video, but it's okay because it's still pretty early and I have a lot of time to read King Lear. And that's one of my favorite plays, actually, by Shakespeare. Also, what I read, what I just read, Macbeth. Macbeth is definitely one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. So, talking about Shakespeare, um, I, I mentioned him in the bonus video I made mean, about Shakespeare, but born in 1564, died in 1616, wrote about 39 plays. Um, he wrote Macbeth and the Jacobean era. I'll be talking about it in a sec, but um, his sources came from Hans Chronicles and three of Seneca's plays, Hercules, Furens, Medea, and Agamemnon. So those were all Seneca plays that he got his inspiration from. This is a very Senecan kind of tragedy. Um, Two things at the time that Shakespeare was writing this. It was in his dark period when he was writing mostly tragedies. Oh, let's see what I want to say. This is Rat Seven One. It's my little Pomeranian. He's so sweet. Good boy. Can you hide the camera? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm so crazy. Yeah. I'm so crazy. Anyway. Um. So. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Um. It's written the dark period for Shakespeare. Um. He. I wrote this in Jacobean era, which was the time where James was king. And this is after Elizabeth's death. Um, so, this is the first flame reading. It's in the Jacobean era. Um, so, performances of this play. Um, is performed. Although written in 1606, it was performed in 1610 or 1611 Globe. Um, it was, there was also an adaptation for an indoor performance at the Black Friars Theater. Um, then There was the Restoration Era when this was performed. A lot of Shakespeare plays were performed in the Restoration Era. Um, Edmund Keane, actually, in the 19th century, um, gave a great performance of this play. Um, being a Shakespearean actor. Um, I think, well, it's from the 20th century. Um, the ideas of Stanislavski and Brecht. This play was performed a lot. Um, there was one um, in Harlem that Orson Welles directed a the Negro Theater Project, Lafayette Theater. Um, there was. Um, one with Florence Olivier in 1955 and Sir Ian McClellan in 76. Um, and yeah, these are some of those major um, productions that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but um, moving on to the plot of this play. So at the beginning, there are these three witches, um, three sisters, three graces, and that's a big motif in literature and drama and art. Um, 
with three sisters. Um, they're also called the Weird Sisters. Um, in this way. But, um, these witches meet and they just talk. Um, in the next scene, um, Macbeth, um, Thane of Glamis becomes the Thane of Cawdor. Um, well, he's gonna get that title. And the witches meet again in that scene and they predict that his prophecies and they come true. Um, to Macbeth. Um, and so Duncan gives, King Duncan gives Macbeth the title. And Lady Macbeth, the wife of Macbeth, learns of her husband's title on one side. Um, hold on. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that's an important text, but I'm not going to answer it now. Um, so, Lady Macbeth hears that Duncan is coming over, according to Macbeth. Eventually he arrives, and Lady Macbeth tells Macbeth that they're going to kill King Duncan. So, Macbeth contemplates the murder, and Macbeth and Lady Macbeth get ready, and, you know, they go and they kill, they kill the king, and then um, the kingdom learns of the murder of the king. Um, and Ross tells Macduff um, that Macbeth had slain the king. Now, Macbeth takes the throne, and he is suspicious of Banquo, and that's his friend, and he tells these murderers to go kill him. So, um, meet Macbeth and Lady Macbeth further discuss their plans, and then murderers kill ba Banquo, and, um, Banquo's son, Fleance, escapes, and at a dinner party, Macbeth sees the ghost of Banquo, and, you know, the witches meet again, and Macbeth, Macduff is told that Duncan's son sons are alive, one of them, Malcolm, and have sent for Macduff. So, the witches make a new prophecy for Macbeth, um, saying that no man of woman born will kill you, and uh, there's some bad, um, Barnum Wood. Um, and Macduff, um, his wife and children are killed by the murderers, and Macduff, um, the science he will get. Revenge on his on Macbeth. Um, my best friend's texting me. Um, sorry guys. Anyway, so Lady Macbeth feels guilty for her actions, and Macbeth, meanwhile, is trying to figure out who. Is not of Wharton born. So he asks for his armor and he goes to March to Burton Wood and he soon learns of his wife's death. So um Macduff and Malcolm advance and they meet Macbeth and Macbeth is slain and in the end Macduff I mean not Macduff, Malcolm, the son of Duncan, takes the throne. So Characters in this play. Um, well, they're not major. Um, there's Ross and Lennox. I mean, they, they, they talk quite a bit, but to my analysis, they're not as important. Um, um, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth go hand in hand. Um, Macbeth. Oh, what do I want to say to him? Um, 
he, his wife basically tells him to carry out these deeds. His wife pushes him into this, but really, I mean, they do say, I have heard arguments that woman is the downfall of man, um, but really Macbeth is the one who decides to do everything. He's the one who kills, he sends to kill Banquo, he's the one who sends to kill Macduff, Stanley, um, he's the one who kills the king, well, he and Lady Macbeth do that, um, but, He, I, I mean, his wife gave him the idea, but he didn't have to go along with it. And, um, really, his motive is ambition. Um, I guess you could partly say that it had to do with marriage, that he was on uh, henpack, but really, it had to do with his ambition to become king. And his wife. Which I'm gonna get into in a sec. His wife, what I wanted to say about her, um, she wants to see her husband have power. She wants to have her husband, um, be glorious. She wants to see her husband, um, prevail. She wants her husband is king, um, the supreme ruler of the land, and, um, I guess what he is at the moment is not good enough for her. And she pushes him to get better things because he wasn't motivated to do it. Um, so, all an argument could be made that it is Macbeth's fault. Um, yeah, it was Macbeth's fault. Um, we can't blame it on the women. I guess both of these people were evil, and she want she wanted the best for her husband, but had bad intentions, and he made poor decisions, he was too ambitious, so, um, yeah, what a lovely couple. Um, Duncan, um, makes a brief appearance, but he's a fairly kindly king, and just an innocent victim, like Banquo, like Macduff's family. Um, so, all these innocents are killed, um, just out of the paranoia and guilt of Macbeth and his wife. Um, the ones who seek vengeance in this play are Malcolm and Macduff. They bring a sense of justice in this play, and this play does have more than revenge, it's about justice. Um, it's not about, like, oh, I'm so mad, I want to see his blood. And it's more about this guy is just killing people left and right. He needs to be stopped, and he needs to be taught a lesson. Well, you don't want to learn a lesson by dying, but still... Um, just needs to be put an end to, and <clears throat> Malcolm does deserve to be king. He's the son of Duncan. Macbeth didn't deserve to be king. He, um, served himself to the title. Um, the witches, all three females, and it's another thing. Um, they... Parallel to Agamemnon, they are kind of like Cassandra, although, I mean, Agamemnon thinks they're crazy, 
um, and yet the right um, about everything. So there, there is a different, definite parallel between the witches and Agamemnon. Um, so, um, and I know, like they have that crazy thing going on, kind of like Cassandra, like Mad Woman, but um, yet madness is. Not such a bad thing, I guess. Um, so moving on to theme, throw a bunch of them. Um, guilt and paranoia. We see that in this play. Um, Lady Macbeth in Act Five deals with guilt. Um, and Macbeth actually doesn't really. Deal with guilt. He's more paranoid of people trying to kill him and getting in the way and finding out what he did. So um, there's a clear difference between them. In the beginning, he does contemplate whether he should or not murder. He is afraid to, and he. When when it comes to Duncan, he hesitates, but ultimately the actions carried out by the couple. Um, and yet, I see this place arguing. Um, your your bad actions will come back to haunt you. Um, it seems we have conscience. Um, even if we're evil. Um. Somehow, we will, we can't erase the blood on our hands. Um, we can't wash it off. Um, Fate and Prophecy, um, big connection to the Greek plays, um, so, we have these weird sisters, the witches, and they, predict Macbeth's fate, his, these prophecies, and um, Macbeth, as a tragic character, can't escape his fate. Um, he's to, he's bound to be king, he's bound to die, so um, he can't really escape his fate. Um, Macbeth, as king, becomes corrupt with power. Um, this ties in with a play that I'm going to mention a bit called King Ubu, or Pierre Ubu, or Ubu Rex, or Ubu Roy. Um, um, Ubu the King. Um, so. Um, well, I'll just mention that play now. That is an adaptation of Macbeth. Um, other Mac adaptations of Macbeth that I should have mentioned. There's Inesco's Macbeth, and there's Eric Koble's Friday Days. I've read all these plays, but Ubu is the one that I'll be I'm talking about um, later on when I get to that play because it's on the reading list. But um, in that play, we deal with more corruption of power. But here, there is still like the king is corrupt with power, and it all ties in with the theme of cycle of violence. How um, the king has a reign, and they once that reigns over. Um, the next king takes over, so, um, just, and that ties in with life as a whole. Um, marriage, um, I, I already, I was going to talk about this here, but I already talked about how Macbeth and Lady Macbeth have an interesting romantic marriage, how she wants the best for him, she has ambitions for him, and he, it drives him to have ambition, um, 
So, uh, although when she dies, Macbeth isn't utterly affected by her death. So I find that interesting, actually. Um, and yeah, so these are the themes and the analysis. I'm um, moving on to what I thought of the play. I think the themes are interesting, definitely universal, definitely um, has found impact on literature and it's a good read. Um, it would have been interesting to see more interaction with Lady Macbeth and Macbeth and to see what Macbeth did as a king more than just kill people. And I, I don't know, I think the acts, the scenes within the acts, they're poorly structured. I, compared to other Shakespeare plays that I've read, the five act structure, I, I thought it was poorly done. Um, the sequence of the events. Um, compared to other plays I've read, I do think it bears a strong resemblance to the Greek plays since I only read <clears throat> Oedipus by Seneca, but I didn't get much of the view on Seneca's plays, but um, definitely Greek and Roman plays, this play ties in with them. The witches also kind of served as a chorus in this play, so I just, yeah. And, yeah, that's it for Macbeth, so I will be doing some four makeup videos, and then I will be moving on to King Lear later tonight. So, okay, bye.